Hi, I'm here with Andrea Simmons and uh, she's um, shared with us her um, remarkable journey out of addiction and uh, into recovery. So please tune in to that video clip of her sharing her story with ice addiction. And that uh, journey um, birthed um, this amazing project, this campaign. Um, it's called the Anti-Ice uh, Campaign, Australia Campaign. <laughs> and uh, um, it's being deli delivered nationwide in Australia. Um, so you can go into the website and you can find out more information. Um, you know, programs are being delivered in schools. Um, you know, make make contact if you, you, you are an educator or you're a leader um, at your school and uh, interested in having this program delivered. So tell us what are you doing and, and um, you know, what do you see going on in terms of this ice culture here in Australia in particular? Um, well, in Australia in particular, statistically, um, we can just gauge by the 2015 uh, task force report, the ICE task force report, report um, is really clear in showing, um, and that's two years ago, um, but that was really clear in showing that we do have a severe epidemic um, in our mm. nation. Um, you know, just to kind of give you a rough estimate um, of figures because this, these are people that we're talking about and this is, you know, somebody's child, somebody's brother, you know, somebody's sister, um, but they're talking around 27 youth every day become addicted to ice every single day. Today wow. there's another 27. Mm. Tomorrow, another 27. Now the fact that only 2% of these people will actually recover um, mm. And the strength of and the purity of the product on our streets at the moment. Um, back when I became addicted, it would have been about twenty-five to thirty percent purity strength level. Mm. Um, today, on our streets, we're seeing anywhere from seventy percent to ninety percent in some places. Mm. Now, what this means is that the product is so much stronger that straight away it affects the neurological pathways in your brain. Straight mm. away, it strips the dopamine mm. and the serotonin straight away it hijacks the frontal lobe so no longer is is you know time uh, where other drugs you know over time you'll see a slow deterioration mm. um, and an impact on their brain and and the effects of that uh, with ISIS pretty much in the media mm. um, and you know that's a real concern because um, you know people are not knowing enough about it. I mean, you see some commercials on TV, you know, you take ice, you have superhuman powers. I don't know that that is completely the, you know, the right message we want to give. Um, I never had any of that uh, type of effect where there was a aggression and violence mm. as such, um, you know, but there's certainly a definite, um, you know, deterioration of the brain. Mm. Um, and, you know, five years clean today, I still have memory issues um and i'm mm. still working at supplementing and repairing that mm. but new neurological pathways are formed in the brain mm. um where you know you don't i'm not thinking the same but you know the hippocampus in the brain goes back to mm. retrieve the memory mm. um and you know it, it has to start working again properly mm. and some of the stats that are um, being shown out there is that they've done some um some brain scans of youth that have used ice six times, okay, mm. six times only, and it, it's highlighting um, in the brain the effects. It would be equivalent to that of Parkinson's. Mm. Okay, so that's that's what it, it's actually doing um, to people's brains. And you know, we or, we've always had um, drug education, mm. and that's fantastic. Um, what we're doing is different. Mm. Um, we have actually partnered up um, with, we're using the model of the meth project, um, mm. which they've used in the US uh, for over 10 years in eight states and dramatically reduced the um, effects or the, the use of ice within mm. teens by 63%. Wow. Um, in adults by 74 and that it's dramatically reduced um, crime rate as well. So I looked at that for a couple of years mm. um, and remodeled it to suit the Australian culture with Australian mm. clips and um, Australian people who had been through ice addiction mm. and we could then dissect their story. Um, and 
you know, people like myself who have been through that journey um, are trained with dual diagnosis training. Mm. Uh, we undergo um, blue cards and um, induction, and we integrate our personal stories into the evidence best practice workshop presentation mm. that we hold with these kids. Mm. And, you know, I think it's, um, it, we come in there with the statement like, we're not your parents, we're not teachers, we're not police or authority, we're not going to tell you not to do this. But we're going to show you some real stuff and we're going to share with you the truth of what this drug's going to yeah, do to you. Yeah, really good. And because mm. we've been there, the kids mm. are really, um, they really listen and they take a different mm. approach because we're not saying don't do drugs. Everybody knows drugs aren't good for you, aren't you? Mm. You know? Mm. But it's, you know, somebody comes in there and says, I did this, man, and this is what it did to me and I still have bleeding kidneys till today, mm. you know? And... So, you know, we can share from a real perspective of we know what we're talking about, we've been there and, you know, these kids have a different approach um, Mm. and they're really grateful for Mm. hearing the truth. So we not only educate in schools uh, year 7 to 12, Mm -hmm. um, but we also educate in in companies, uh, workplaces, organisations. We're going out into the mines, we've Mm. been to the um, child safety, youth justice. We're working closely with the police now. Mm. and yes, yeah, it's, it's we just want to unveil the enemy, you know, mm. and share the truth, so that people are really aware of what it, what forms it can come in. What's what's the what's in ice? You know, the fact that there's Drano and battery acid mm. and acetone, and like mm. I, I bring a bottle of Drano out, and I say to the kids, "All right, mm. who wants to get high on the first thirty mils of this? Come mm. on, you want to? We're going to get mm. off our heads." And mm. they go, "No, why not? Mm. Well, it's poison. You wouldn't drink this, mm. right?" So this is what I was putting in my body, guys, mm, you know, mm. and, and these kids are, whoa. But, you know, yeah, people call it, might call it shock tactic, but this is the reality. Mm. And if that's shocking, well, they need to know about it. Mm. It's truth. They mm. can be deceived, you know. Mm. And they're making ice in the form of little teddy bear tablets mm. and little pink teddy bears mm. and, you know, giving out sample bags at, um, mm. at schools and you know mm. passing around pipes um telling kids that they have a marijuana and they're lacing it nice so they become more mm. regularly dependent mm. Mm. and they swap them over you know so we're unveiling all of this we also hold community forums in communities um mm. and we also engage kids after we do the workshop in an air, um the school workshop in an area uh we engage them in an art competition with the same mm. message the message we're giving to our kids is not even once it's not worth the risk yeah. and the consequences yeah. you're going to get from this. So true. So this is what we do in mm. a nutshell. Apart from that, we have family support online. Um, mm. We also do brief interventions. Um, mm. All of our presenters, like myself, who have been there, uh, you know, we we get calls a lot saying, "Look, I don't want to be in this world anymore." Mm. And we go out there and have a conversation with mm. them and mm. show them the way that they can get out mm. and how to get help and mm. where to go in the area mm. and um, just support them in the positive choices that they're making so Mm. yeah we're uh, unveiling the enemy and creating pathways to services wonderful wonderful um so i think that this um work is so important because um you know the drug world when you're young especially in that very vulnerable age of teen teenage and high school years it can be seductive yeah. i mean drugs can can be seductive and um and you know placing these kind of conversations within the class context within that vulnerable group that would be probably more likely to make choices out of naivety and, and not having information is is very important because it's very hard to disconnect when you're hearing a real life story and someone's explaining, you know, the impact on their physical body. And um, and so I I really um, encourage people who are within. Um, you know the school system um if if you um haven't had that conversation if you find it difficult to facilitate that conversation amongst um your your school uh, within that age group um i really encourage you to make contact with aaic because they already have a structure they already have a system in place and um I think that, um, you know, it's something that other nations 
you know it's something that a, a lot of um you know it's not just now in australia i know it's big yeah. in in a, a lot of nations and so um thank you for sharing um about your story but also about the service thank you louise i just like to mm. um cap off with um you know the struggle doesn't discriminate mm. it's not only attacking our youth um but we've got people from all walks of life mm. um you know lawyers to doctors to people 63 years old you know they're deceived in somebody says oh I'll just take some of this it'll make you focus or it'll make you relax um that's why we hold the community forums uh you know it, it's very deceptive um and and they don't understand, people don't understand mm -hmm. where it's going to take them. And mm -hmm. we really want to share that um, so that their lives aren't destroyed. Like, you know, a lot of our friends, um, you know, ha haven't made it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been the 2% that have. So we really want to warn people out there and in mm -hmm. workplaces. I mean, you know, if you have a business or a, mm -hmm. an organisation, um, you know, it's really important to educate your staff because, you know, the, the, you get people stealing from your company you'll get mm -hmm. they won't turn up for work uh it, it's very very catchy once one gets on it um you know pe people pass it around really mm. quick until they mm. see the destruction it's causing mm. by that time it's too late mm. you know so if you can pre-warn them and you know as part of your workplace health and safety you know i urge you to you know you need to do something you need to warn them mm. and the best warning comes from somebody that's been there Mm. and that can explain, you know, what they're going to get um, from going down that path. And if you're listening today and you want to help um, in any way, you, I, I invite you to join the Army, to join the Australian Anti-Ice Campaign Army mm -hmm. and help us educate more kids across our nation. Um, you know, something needs to be done about it. And mm. these are lives. These are somebody, somebody's loved one. Mm. You know, somebody's family member and unless we do something different we're going to get more of what we've had mm. so you can get hold of um andrea and also through the website anti-ice um the australian anti-ice campaign and um like andrea said ice doesn't discriminate mm.